Shalom, brothers and sisters. It's Bates Yerushalayim again. I want to talk about this confusion that's going on within the black community. You got all of these different religions. You got Muslim, you got Egyptologists, and you got Hebrews, you got Christians. Um, it ain't even up for debate. We're the superior. We're the true gods of the earth. We're the true teachers of the earth. All of these false pagan religions, you know, is just causing people in the community to fall. In Exodus 11 and 7, the most I say, he had put a difference between us and the Egyptians. Through, through the scriptures, I'm going to prove to you that the most I put a difference between us and the Egyptians. And it's not even a competition when it comes to dominance and who done done more for the earth. And and who's the greater between the two? We're going to go to Exodus 11 and 7 right here. I already got to open. It says, but against any of the children of Israel. Shall not a dog move his tongue against any man or beast, that ye may know how the Lord doeth put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. As we see right here, come, coming out of Egypt, and Exodus, the Most High said it was going to clearly be a difference between the Egyptians, Ethiopians, and Israel. The seed of Jacob. Now, it's a lot of confusion going on on why, how we even came into Egypt as if we were took in as slaves. No, we came in with our brother Joseph. If many people in the Egyptian community know, Joseph and Imhotep have similar stories. I find it funny that I, I talked to a couple brothers within the Egyptian community, and I said, you know Imhotep? And they said, yeah. They knew all the great things he has had did for Egypt, an architect, a renovator, just reestablish Egypt. I said, did you know that was Joseph from the 12 tribes of Israel? They were baffled. They were baffled. Imhotep built grain bins for Egypt during the famine. Joseph built grain bands for Egypt during the famine. Joseph reinvented Egypt. Imhotep reinvented Egypt. I mean, it's simple. You can go on Google right now and type in Joseph and Imhotep, and you're going to find out that many writers, even National Geographic, in, in their January 1995 edition, they wrote that Joseph could very well be Imhotep. This is, is like the facts are there. So our greatness is in Egypt already. Us as Israelites, we don't even have to speak about the greatness we have done. We, when we left Egypt, the greatness left Egypt. We built those pyramids. We're going to go to... We're going to go to... Uh, we're going to go to the book of Joshua. Now, many people say this book isn't authentic. That's a lie. We're going to go to the book of Joshua, chapter 44, verse 12. And we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna prove in the book of Joshua that there was a difference, obviously, between the Egyptians and Joseph. And then we're going to go back and we're going to prove that within the scriptures. Of the Holy Scriptures, the Holy Bible. Okay. Because there's just a lot of foolery going on around here. You know, the, the facts, the, the proof is in the pudding. I got my sword. We ch we cutting. You know, we ain't, we ain't got to argue. It's a lot of lip and no script with these people. Okay, here we go right here. The book of Joshua, chapter 44, verse 12. And the Lord was with Joseph 
and he became a prosperous man. And the Lord blessed the house of Potiphar for the sake of Joseph. And Potiphar left all he had in the hands of Joseph. And everything was regulated by his wish in the house of Potiphar. And Joseph was 18 years old, a youth, a youth with beautiful eyes and comely appearance. And like unto him was not in the whole land of Egypt. I'm going to read that again. And like unto him was not in the whole land of Egypt. Here we go proving with the book of Joshua that there was nobody in the land like Joseph. There, we're Hebrews. There's a clear, distinctive, we don't even have to talk. From the schools to the features, facial features. Now we're going to go in the Holy Scriptures and we're going to correlate this with the book of Joshua. Proving that the house, any house that a Hebrew comes in is going to be blessed. Just like we just read in the book of Joshua. And we're going to prove that, that it was obviously a difference between Joseph and the Egyptians. Before we do that, we're going to prove that our forefather, Israel, Jacob, was such a great man. He blessed the Pharaoh. Many people put the Pharaoh at a high status, but Yaakov had such a high status in the land that he blessed the Pharaoh. We're going to go to that. See, we all up through Egypt. All you got to do is do your research. It's easy. You got a lot of people doing a lot of chit-chat. We made Egypt great. They, I, don't, I don't think people understand that. When we left, it was nothing. The, the Greeks took over. The Greeks been took over Egypt since 325 B.C. I mean, A.D. After the death of Christ, they, they, had, the, the, they had Egypt on lock. The word hieroglyph itself is a Greek word. So it's just a lot of fooling going on. We're going to go to Genesis 47. And Joseph brought in Jacob, his father, and set him before the Pharaoh. And Jacob blessed the Pharaoh. Blessed Pharaoh. We're going to jump up. He blessed the Pharaoh again in verse 10 as you jump up. So if the Pharaoh is such a great person, why is Jacob blessing him? If, if the Egyptians is such a great person, why does it take a Hebrew sold by his brothers into Egypt, blended in with the Egyptians? Yeah, we look alike, but there's a distinction. The Egyptians, if you read all through the Holy Scriptures, the, the so-called Africans, the Hamites, can never get the riddles the Hebrews can get. From Samson to Daniel to with Joseph and the Pharaoh. He couldn't interpret his dream. It took a Hebrew in jail on the bottom to prophesy his dream because that's what the Most High has given us as Hebrews, he has, he, he's given us a, a, a gift out this world that every kingdom in this world is willing to kill and fight to have us in their empire because they know we build great empires from Egypt to Greece to Rome to today in America. There's nothing new under the sun. I believe that's in the scriptures too. So we... I think black, the thing is, black people have got so used to being in captivity, we don't know anything else. But we're kings and queens. Now, it's obvious that Egypt is no more. It's obvious that the Most High destroyed Egypt 
in Genesis and we walked away in, in Exodus. We walked away when with Moses in Exodus. If we the Pharaoh chased us down. He he we he needed us. Imagine black people walking out of America today. That's the same power the most I had in those days. And we did walk out of Egypt. The greatest empire in the world at that time. And went on to build our own great empire. So all this talk about the Egyptians and the and the fame of the Egyptians, the Egyptians, you can't really name anything great the Egyptians did on earth. Now I don't hate the Egyptians. Don't get me wrong. I know my scriptures. Deuteronomy 23 and 7 say, Thou shalt not hate the Egyptian, for you are a foreigner in his land. I understand that. But we're not going to put our people down and put up the Hamite, the Canaanite people. That's going to, that's going off. We're royalty. And we must know our history. We have to know where we're done. In order to know where we're going, we have to know where we've been. There's nothing new in the sun. You can let the TVs lie to you and tell you there's this new invention and, and it's a new world. It's a new time in the world. That's a lie. There's nothing new under the sun. We built every great civilization on this earth. You can't think of any great civilization without a Hebrew Israelite being involved. Our DNA is in every great civilization. And with that being said, I'm going to get up out of here. Shalom.